I've been looking into oscilloscopes to use for automated test equipment and I was thinking it'd be really nice to start using these USB type scopes where you don't have the whole screen and all the buttons and everything because why do you need that? It just takes up a bunch of space. It should cost extra money. Uh, but what I've been noticing is there are definitely fewer options for the USB only scopes. Um, this one here is the first one I'm kind of evaluating because this is by Agilent HP Keysight. So it's more of a legit brand name one. This is the U, it's Agilent U2702A and 2701A. So the 2A is 200 megahertz, the 1A is 100 megahertz. I got these off of eBay. Um, the 200 megahertz one was like a buy it now for a thousand bucks. Normally they're 2000 around $2,000 and uh, the 100 megahertz one I got on an auction for like 250 bucks. So that was a pretty good deal. And I've got these 300 megahertz passive scope probes. It's a N2863B. And I've got both those hooked up to channel one and I'm just going to connect them both here to this XMC microcontroller demo board that I've got outputting a 50 kilohertz sine wave. So the first thing, if you check out the back of the unit here, hopefully this is pseudo in focus, you got a 12 volt 2 amp input along with the USB input and then this proprietary connector that's for hooking it into this box that they make where you can stack like six of these different uh, USB units they have. They have a, um, I think, a DMM and a switch matrix and some other things. You can put them all into one unit that just has one USB output that controls them. Um, they also have this cooling fan here and that uh, is my first complaint. So I'm going to plug in the external power supply and you'll see the first issue I ran into here. Now it might be because this one's used, but it's got some crazy resonance going on. And if I push on the USB, it kind of gets rid of it. So the fans slowly ramp up, but even without that resonance, um, it's pretty loud. Like, I'll get my mic close to it here, but it's pretty annoying. Like, I don't really want to have this running in my room. It's a lot louder than my computer fans. So that's a letdown. Um, also, I noticed that they get pretty warm, so I don't think, you know, I think the fan is actually necessary. So that's the first thing that's bumming me out about this one. Um, I think I might have to check out the PicoScope next. It's less of a name brand, but I think for sort of the startup -y brands, they've been doing it for quite a few years now. And people seem to really uh, like the PicoScope, so maybe we'll check that out next. But for now, let's go over to the computer and I'll show you the software that Agilent has for this guy. First, I'll uh, talk a little bit about installing the software was slightly confusing. I'm still not 100% sure how I got it to work, but uh, this is the main website page on Keysight. So if you go over here to support and then drivers, firmware, and software, then you have all of these different things you can download. And I think the main one that I would just start with is this measurement manager here. So I would download that and install it. And then the question is, does that uh, install the drivers as well? So to check the drivers, you gotta open up your device manager and then look, you should, if it's set up correctly, you'll get this USB test and measurement devices here. And these are the two scopes we have plugged in right now. Um, for a while I was just getting 
sort of an unknown, you know, driver, unavailable device in the USB category. And then at some point it got picked up and I'm not sure exactly what I did. I installed this bench view and I installed the measurement manager. But initially I was trying to just do these IVI drivers and this hardware driver. And when I did those, they weren't showing up. I restarted and tried to manually do it and it didn't work. And then I think it was when I installed bench view that it finally got it to work. So, um, but bench, bench view, let's see. So it doesn't really say it here. Um, somewhere licensing required. Yeah. All right. So this one here actually costs $157, this bench view. Uh, that scared me at first. I was like, isn't there a free thing? And there is. That's this measurement manager is the free software. And I got a demo of bench view. I'll show you that real quick. It's actually, it looks a little nicer, but in my opinion, it's worse than this free one measurement manager. Anyway, just to reiterate that, I would at this point start off with the measurement manager see if that installs the drivers and if that doesn't work then i would try just installing the bench view because you can do a 30-day trial and try it out and even if it even if you're not going to use it i think it might have been what installed the drivers for me that worked and if that still doesn't work then i would install uh these two guys here the ivi driver and the hardware driver package and then um if you do all that, it should definitely work. And take note, here is the sample program for binary data conversion. I haven't tried that yet, but that looks like how you would uh, use your own program to convert the files that the Agilent software makes into uh, readable files that you could convert to uh, text documents or whatever you're trying to do with your program. This is another tidbit I came across. I'll put these links in the description. but if you're still having problems, it says that there's this command prompt uh, thing you can run to register, correctly register the drivers with Windows 10. This is the IVI driver. Um, I did this while I was originally troubleshooting it and it didn't make any difference, so that may or may not <laughs> help for anything. So now let's check out the measurement manager and then we'll end it with the bench view uh, real quick so here this comes up it asks you which scope you want to use so we'll get the 200 megahertz first and then I think you can just open another one or you can do new window and we can select the other one now now we have the two scopes so this one here is the 200 megahertz this is the 100 megahertz they're both connected to the same 50 kilohertz signal. If we go to here, we can make sure channel one is on and run. So here's the signal. Here we go on the other one. Channel one is, turn it off and on, do run. So there we go. We have, you can't drag the trigger. This interface is um, a little bit lacking, but it's all right. So you can click you can click down here. These buttons are the same as these up here. So we can go to the trigger menu. That just changes this panel. And then you can adjust the trigger like this. So you can see it's kind of shaken back and forth because the trigger's right on the line where it's kind of jumping around. The other thing you can do with this is do the FFT. Um, so you can click on the FFT tab here activate, deactivate, and then you have this peak scan. So you can do find the first peak, which doesn't seem like it's working really well for some reason. Right here, you have different filters. Let's try this one. So here's the peak scan here. Uh, we got to get the FFT window. So if we do next peak, you can do next peak here, it'll show you 
on the screen. First peak. This one's working. Um, I don't know. They look like they're both set up about the same here. Let's see. You can adjust this. But for some reason, this one's showing the first peak here at 50 kilohertz, which is correct. And this one is not really locking in on it. Anyway, the other thing you can do is these math functions. So I've added a couple here. On this one, you go uh, measurement. And then you can find things down here, like the peak to peak. Double click on that. Let's go back to the waveform here. And do the frequency. So you'll notice here the peak to peak is 100 millivolts on this one, and it's one volt on this one. That's because we didn't correctly set up the probes. Uh, we didn't tell it they were 10 times. So for that, got to go to the analog here then you have to go to this little thing here pointing to the right and attenuation you have to change it to 10 times so now it's giving the correct one volt range here and these guys are pretty self-explanatory you can change uh, the scaling on the voltage and the scaling on the time and they have here file oscilloscope and you can save the uh, graph or save the data so you can save it to a csv or you can save the math functions so let's close this out and next we'll try this bench view real quick so here it is and we have picked up our two scopes here double click on that and so now we have the two scopes we can just click back and forth on them here in the same kind of different scaling stuff stop and run gotta select channel one so there it is we go to the other one I think we could maybe get rid of this and there we go that's a little better hmm. yep not real easy <laughs> oh they have these buttons up here so you can tell them how you want to lay it out we can do top and bottom side to side Anyway, it's a little hard to see, so we'll just go with this one full screen here. And then we can... So here's the cool thing about this one. You can grab this stuff and just move it. So we can put this down here, and then we can make it a little bigger. And if we get the trigger going... So I had to do 100 millivolts because the attenuation's off here, but you can grab the trigger, which is really cool. But so here's the issue. When the attenuation is one times, this works. See, this is the kind of bug that I noticed. If I change this to 10 times, then I've got to adjust all this stuff accordingly. So we got to lower this back down. Uh, so now we're doing two volts. And check this out. I'll move this guy up here and it goes back down here so it's just like somehow the scaling of the trigger versus the 10 times isn't lining up like if i put one volt it shows it 10 times lower if i do two volts you know so it is triggering but this line should be up here somewhere uh i don't know if there's some settings to change the scaling of the trigger or something but i don't know i just saw that and i saw that this one wasn't free and i was like ah, what a pile 
So that'll do it for now. I was thinking I could do in the future a teardown video and or a programming the scope with Python video. Um, I'm going to wait and see if there's any interest on that. So if you do want to see that, let me know in the comments. And thanks for watching.